Before we get into the top 10, I'm going to start with an honorable mention, and that is Philip Rivers. I'm struggling with him in 2019 because Melvin Gordon is holding out. Now, on one hand, without Gordon, the Chargers could be throwing the ball even more. But on the other hand, he is such a huge part of that offense in the receiving game. He had four receiving touchdowns last year. So Rivers, to me, is kind of like when you're stuck trying to find something on television and your Netflix is down. So you're just kind of scrolling around. You see Modern Family. Like, that's not your first choice of television shows. It's probably not your second. But, you know, it's not bad, even great at times. But it's not like somebody makes it your first choice. And if you want to take this one step further and make some Rivers family jokes, I won't stop you. But I'm a journalist, and I don't do that stuff. So let's start with the top ten, and we're going to go with Cam Newton, who played like Superman last year. Well, Superman too, when you consider he went into the Fortress of Solitude, lost his powers for Lois Lane, all that stuff going on. Because he's kind of a risk coming into this season because of his arm, his arm problems. He had to revamp his throwing motion, but he was one of the best quarterbacks last season in the first eight games. He completed nearly 70% of his passes, 15 touchdowns, four interceptions, a passer rating of 108, and he averaged about 42 rushing yards per game. And then you look at him this season, his receiving course, you got DJ Moore. He's the best receiver from last year's draft. I know my Bears friends are going to be like, what about Anthony Miller? Well, you know what, DJ Moore? is pretty awesome, and he also has CMC. So with the ability to call his own number, I'm pretty confident of putting Cam Newton at number 10 because he has the upside to play even better. Now at number 9, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to stay in that division, though, because I like the NFC South. But let's go. You know, let's go Drew Brees. And you, you know, you kind of keep waiting for the other shoe to drop. And I'll go back and do another TV analogy here. It's like the later seasons of The Office. Were you watching it out of habit? Am I taking Drew Brees out of habit? Because you know his glory days are kind of behind him. The Saints haven't been throwing the ball as much as they have in the past. As a matter of fact, Brees failed to reach 4,000 passing yards for the first time in his Saints career, but only because he didn't play in Week 17. So that's just kind of semantics. But he still had 32 touchdowns with just five interceptions left. Five picks! He was also first in the NFL in wins, which I know is not a fantasy statistic, but... He was first in completion percentage, passer rating, and second in touchdown to interceptions because he had five picks. I don't know why that still amazes me. Anyways, number nine, Matt Ryan, the QB2 last year, which is wild to me when you consider how bad the Falcons offensive line was last season. Ryan was sacked 42 times last year, faced the second most pressure according to next-gen stats. Still, he completed nearly 70% of his passes, threw for nearly 5,000 yards, had 35 touchdowns to go along with seven interceptions. Seven picks, what a slacker. Drew Brees had just five. But you know what? The Falcons used two first-round picks on offensive linemen, which should help protect Ryan this season. But really, if you had so much success not protecting him, why don't you you stick with what, what works? All right, number seven, Russell Wilson. There is some concern with Russell Wilson. I I don't know why. Everyone seems to hate him, though, much in the same way that I hate Hugh Jackman. Now, I don't hate Hugh Jackman because he's bad. It's quite the opposite. I don't like him because he's good. He's good at everything. You know, nobody should be able to do it all. He sings. He dances. Uh, The Greatest Showman was was the role of a life man. But let's talk about Russell Wilson. Now, There are some concerns with Wilson because his passing yards have declined in each of the last two seasons. But his touchdowns to interception ratio has actually increased. Wilson had 35 touchdowns last year and just seven interceptions. Again, these guys aren't throwing double-digit interceptions, so you're taking away a lot of those negative points. And if you're in one of those fancy leagues where you go 6-4, which is what you really should be playing, that is an even better value. He was third in the NFL with a 110.9 passer rating. So while Seattle is a running team, and I understand this, you don't have to don't have to leave a coast. Seattle runs. The, I get it. Seattle runs the ball. Wilson also throws it effectively. All right, now, now we might get a little hot takey here, and I want to tell you something right now. Baker Mayfield is my number six quarterback, and I know it seems weird that we're trusting a Browns quarterback. It's we, I get it. You know, it's kind of like when Adam Sandler started doing serious roles, like the first time he did Punch Drunk Club. But let's get serious about this. Baker Mayfield set the NFL record with 27 touchdown passes last year, most by a rookie, and he started just 13 games. He did come in during that Thursday night game against the Jets, 
Brown's first win, blah, 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 Bud Light. You know the story. The only other rookie quarterbacks to top 25 during their rookie campaign were Peyton Manning and Russell Wilson. Maybe you've heard of them. And speaking of, have you heard, the Browns went out and traded for Odell Beckham Jr. You've seen Eli's numbers with and without OBJ. I'm not going to repeat them here. Let's just say Eli's good when OBJ's there. He's bad when he's not. Similarly, I expect Baker Mayfield to be even better this season with that full complement of receivers and Todd mother freaking Monken, the guy who made Ryan Fitzpatrick last year so good, is now the offensive coordinator for the Browns. I don't think I have Baker Mayfield high enough. We might have to attend this at some point in the near future. Number five, I'm going to go with Kyler Murray. I know he hasn't played it down in the NFL. That's what you told me last year. When I said that Baker Mayfield was going to play well, how'd that work out for you? Oh, actually, you know what? Baker wasn't that great of a fantasy option, but bigger the, part of the reason for that, though, of course, was the coaching. He had, he had to deal with Hugh Jackson for, for a little bit, and then they switched. There was, the whole thing was going on, but I love Cliff Kingsbury, and I love this offense. Short, quick throws. It's an offense that's going to make the most out of Murray's ability. It's like the perfect mix of things that shouldn't work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand. Like, he's short. He's he's everything. But, you know, it's kind of like the first time you had bacon and chocolate together. You're like, this isn't going to work. Oh, actually, this is pretty amazing. That's exactly what Kyler Murray is going to be like. And you got to understand, he's got Larry Fitzgerald. He's got David Johnson, Christian Kirk. And there seems to be no way Murray can fail. He had similar production to Mayfield during their final seasons at Oklahoma. The only difference is that Murray rushed for 1,001 yards he had 12 rushing touchdowns compared to just 3-11 and 5 for Baker. So I'm not saying that Murray is better than Baker, but I do have him ranked higher, so I guess maybe I am saying that. All right, number four. I don't want to spend a lot of time with this one because it's uh, Aaron Rodgers, who I personally won't have on any team because, well, you know, Packers. He suffered the worst season of his career last year, or at least it seemed that way. He suffered a knee injury in week one against the Bears, and then... He went out and he kind of scuffled through the entire season as the Packers missed the playoffs for the second consecutive year. But here's the thing. He finishes the QB6, which kind of checks all the boxes that I'm looking for when I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. Number one, are the Packers losing? Yes. Is Aaron Rodgers still playing well? Yes. Okay, that's perfect. That's everything that I want out of him. And now you got Matt LaFleur in there. We really don't know much about him other than he's Facebook friends with Sean McVay or else no, they're, they're millennials, so they don't do Facebook. They're probably IG buddies or whatever. But here's the thing. Aaron Rodgers has to be on his best behavior. Because if, if he comes out and he's a jerk to LaFleur, well, then he's just a jerk. Like the thing with McCarthy, it can be a he said, she said, but he has to go out and prove that he's not the problem. It's like when people have a bad public breakup and they have to go out and live their best lives on social media. That's pretty much what Aaron Rodgers has to do. So if you're one of those people who wouldn't mind having him on your team, Aaron Rodgers is a pretty good option at number four. Number three, did you know? I'm going to go Deshaun Watson. I'm going to go ahead and put his name out there. Did you know that Watson was one of three quarterbacks in NFL history with at least 4,000 passing yards and 500 rushing yards in a single season? He was one of the most efficient quarterbacks from weeks 8 to 17 when he completed 73% of his passes, 16 touchdowns, 2 picks. He had a 115.2 passer rating. I wouldn't even consider him as the top quarterback this season, but that offensive line, what are you doing, Texans? Why are you trying to get Watson killed? You've waited forever for a franchise quarterback. And this is how you're going to treat him? I'm going to tell you the same thing that I tell my toddler when she starts breaking her toys. If you don't play nicely with them, I'm giving them away. I will send him to Miami, a team, well, their offensive line's terrible, but I will send him away to a team that will appreciate him if you guys don't start protecting him. All right, number two. And you're probably thinking, like, there's two guys we could possibly go with right now. He couldn't possibly be, yeah, I'm going to say Patrick Mahomes right here. Oh, clutch my pearls. How could he say such a thing? I know, I know. But he's not going to throw for 50 touchdowns this season. He's, he's just not. And I hate to throw around the word regression because it just seems like one of those buzzwords in the, inter, in, the, in the industry. You know, it's like when you hear business people talking about, like, synergy, not a good look. But let's take a look at the facts. Only two other quarterbacks in NFL history have thrown for 50 touchdowns, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. 
Both fell off significantly the following year, mostly Brady because he was injured in week one against the Kansas City Chiefs. But let's look at some quarterbacks. I'll roll it back a little bit. The quarterbacks who have thrown at least 48 touchdown passes. That's happened four times. Brady, Manning twice, Dan Marino. In each instance, they threw at least 16 fewer touchdown passes the following year. And while 34 touchdowns would be amazing for Mahomes, that would be a good season. That's still significantly less than what he had last year. And you're just not going to get the value because somebody in your draft is going to take him in the second round. Don't let it be you. It's cool. Like if he's, if everybody in your league is a hipster and they get together and they're watching this video and they're like, hey, Rank told us to be cool on Mahomes. If he lands in the fifth round, then fine. But don't be the person that overbids for Mahomes early in your draft weight. There's other good quarterback options, including our number one guy, Andrew Luck. Kind of had a breakthrough last season with first-year head coach Frank Wright when he ranked fifth in the NFL with 4,593 passing yards and was second in the league with 39 touchdown passes. I know it's not, it's weird to think of Andrew Luck having a breakthrough because he's been good for pretty much his entire NFL career. But what we're talking about is coming back from that arm injury and everything, and Andrew Luck now finally looks like the guy that we've known and loved for so many years. And one of the reasons for the success is that he got the, rid of the ball quicker through shorter passes and played more out of the shotgun. He was protected much better because the Colts GM, Chris Ballard, has revamped that offensive line. One of the best draft halls last year. So many great offensive linemen. Nobody's touching him. He can scramble. He can still get out there and, and rock it. He can throw the ball. He can run the ball. He does it all. So a second year in the system and rookie Paris Campbell comes in here leads me to believe that he is going to be the number one quarterback this year in fantasy football. Now, as promised, I've also got some other goodness for you. How about five sleepers that you can target later in your drafts if you miss out on one of those guys? If you're being too much of a hipster and you're waiting way too long for a quarterback, well, I've got you covered right here. Here are my top five sleeper quarterbacks. Number one, Josh Allen. Yeah, Josh Allen, yes, of the Buffalo Bills. One of the best fantasy football quarterbacks over the last couple of weeks. He was the QB1. From weeks 12 to 17, and the Bills went out and surrounded him with actual NFL talent this season. Number two, Jameis Winston, the former Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, has never quite got it going during his NFL career, but now he's in a make-it-or-break-it year with Bruce Arians, who we like a lot. Number three, Mitch Trubisky. Obviously, this is year two in Matt Nagy's offense, surrounded by even more talent. Mitch could easily step forward, but... The Bears will probably be blowing everybody out, so they'll run more. So be, no, but I like Mitch Trubisky a lot. Number four, Sam Darnold. He's coming into his second year. He's very he's in a very similar spot than Jared Goff. And you could also make the case that Le'Veon Bell will be his Todd Gurley. There is an opportunity for him to make a significant leap this year, just as long as they can, you know, get rid of Dow Loggins key card and not let him into the building. Then he should be fine. As long as Dow Loggins is not anywhere near the Jets facility, Sam Darnold could have a monster here. Andy Dalton is my number five sleeper. Now, don't underestimate what new coach Zach Taylor could mean for this offense. And I mean, I'm not saying that you go out there and insist that Dalton is going to be your QB1, but he's a great QB2, especially in super flex leagues. Now, a little bit of unpleasantness. Here are five quarterbacks to avoid. We'll start at number one, Kirk Cousins. And mostly because brand new offensive coordinator Kevin Stefanski gave us a glimpse of what life was going to be like this year. Cousins was the QB 16 in the three games that Stefanski was calling the plays last year, even with Gary Kubiak. I expect the Vikings to want to run the ball. Mike Zimmer fired D. Phillip because he wasn't running the ball enough. They're going to try to take the ball out of Kirk Cousins' hands as much as possible. Number two. Matthew Stafford. I know one of his teammates is like, this is the best quarterback I ever played with. I love Matthew Stafford. But again, this team brought in Daryl Bevel to run the offense. The Seahawks ranked first in rushing percentage, third in carries per game during Bevel's time in Seattle. The Lions are going to be a running team. Number three, Marcus Mariota. I'm not here to make jokes. I love Mariota. I think he could be a good quarterback in the NFL, but like the Lions, like the Vikings, this team is going to be running the football. Number four, Joe Flacco, mostly because the Bronco fans already hate me. They're going to leave all these clown emojis. They're going to do all their little thing, which is cute. But you know what? Bronco fans, none of you are getting that Madden coach. So how about that? What? What did I say? Yeah, keep keep watching. 
We might get to that in a little bit. Eli Manning at number five. I mean, again, I talked about this earlier. We've seen the numbers without OBJ. And if you have it, here's a little spoiler alert. He's awful. And he's also 50. And they, they drafted his son. They drafted his doppelganger. At what point do you think he's going to start the full season? He's not. Because at some point, their coach up there, Pat Shermer, is going to be like, you know what? I need to prove that I'm some sort of quarterback guru. So we're going to go with Daniel Jones. And even then, there's another guy that I'm not going to be in, dude. I'm not going to be touching. So those are my top ten. There was an honorable mention. There are five sleepers. There are five quarterbacks to avoid. I know that there are some guys here that probably didn't make the list. Who am I missing? Uh, ben Roethlisberger, he's fine. Jared Goff, he's fine. Derek Carr, you know what? Better than you think. Carson Wentz, you know what? Carson Wentz is good when healthy, Eagles fans. I, listen, Eagles fans, I always have your back, but stop it with Carson Wentz. If he's healthy, he's fine. Like, he's a good player. What do you want from me? Lamar Jackson, sure, why not? Tom Brady, again, it's Tom Brady, probably the best quarterback, probably. Tom Brady is the best quarterback in NFL history, but they're going to run the football. Jimmy Garoppolo coming off a knee injury. I like Jimmy Garoppolo a lot. I think he's going to be a good, he could be a good quarterback, but I don't like, I don't like their running back situation. I don't like the receiver situation. I don't know that he's, if he had like a DeAndre Hopkins type, I could probably get over a little bit more, but I'm going to avoid him. Uh, Nick Foles is on a running team. He could probably be a streaming option at some point. The AFC South is very tough, so that's going to be difficult. The Redskins are going to have a quarterback. I don't know who it's going to be, and I don't think that guy's going to be any good at all. And what about the Dolphins? Look, if you looked at a photo of Ryan Fitzpatrick and, and Josh Rosen together, they look like a father-son team that you see playing pickup basketball. And so you're like, you know what? I'm going to cover the dad because he's a little portly. He's kind of like closer to your age, and Josh looks, you know, pretty athletic. And then you realize Ryan can still drain it. Josh probably doesn't even want to be there. And you're like, oh, why did I, can we switch? Can we switch off? But the one thing about Fitzpatrick, he's going to go out there. He's going to crush it for three games. And then he's going to throw six picks. And then Josh Rosen's going to go in. And then you're not going to know which guy to play from week to week. That's a new system. I think that the Dolphins could really struggle this year. So I'm going to try to avoid the Dolphins as much as possible. So I think I covered everybody. They're all your quarterbacks. And I know I might have mentioned this. I might have promised this even. Little thing about a Madden code. Yes, I do have some codes for Madden, for PS4, for Xbox. So I got you covered. Here's the thing, though. Here's what I need you to do. What can we do? Thank you for getting all the way to the end of this video. Hanging in here for 18 minutes. So the first person to respond with the name of the original drummer of Blink-182, drop that here in the comments. You will get a code sent to you. As long as, you know, you're subscribed to this channel. But thank you so much. More good fantasy content coming to you in the next couple of weeks as we get closer to the NFL season. Until next time, we'll see you then.